this is a three-pronged approach to choosing leaders. And, and this is interesting because notice that functional expertise comes last. First comes people skills. And, and why is that? People skills so important. John Maxwell sell, says leadership is, is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. So your ability to influence people and to work with them, to understand them, like you all have said, discussed with the getting the employee feedback, is, is paramount to be able to get them on board, to get buy-in, and get them moving, get them to understand your clear direction, and then uh, being able to, to help them move efficiently and effectively and speedily. So here's a, a leadership uh, selection model that, that chooses leaders, first and foremost, based on their people skills. Second of all, it, cho it chooses leaders based on their conceptual abilities. Their abilities to, to think about market conditions in my particular community, whether it's uh, Tennessee or, or Provo, Utah, or, or Hawaii, what's going on in my marketplace from an employment perspective, from an economic perspective, are people moving in, moving out, are there universities, what's the trend that's occurring, what do I expect to happen over the next five to 10 years? In my locality, as well as in the financial services industry. What are fintech companies doing? What new products am I going to have to, what new mortgage products am I going to have to create? So conceptual thinking. And then lastly comes my functional expertise. How well do I know the, know the mortgage business? How well do I know finance? How well do I know uh, the branch network and how to operate branches? That comes last because lots of people have the functional expertise. But you really start weeding people out when you're looking at people skills and conceptual thinking with respect to your culture. So you're looking for these people. Remember, let's keep in mind the playing field, those eight pillars of strategic uh, alignment. And we're, we're finding leaders that fit that, who we are, what are our core values. And are they able to influence people along those lines and communicate with them and think about our culture, what we want to be, how do we want to stay unique, but keep moving, right? So that helps build clarity, your ability to choose leaders with people skills, conceptual thinking, and functional expertise. How many of you in this room know that your credit union has a, a formal leadership development model? Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, quite a few. That's excellent. So oftentimes this is neglected, and I'm glad to see that many in the room have this. So here's a leadership a development model that, that doesn't assume that once somebody becomes an executive, they're done. They're fully baked. It assumes that they have to keep growing, that they've got a lot more potential left. So at this credit union, they have leadership development at, at three levels. And in the VP and above, they put them into classes. So uh, a class could be two, five, 10, 20, depending on the size of your credit union. And there, there are two things. One, we want to teach them the technical skills. So how do we innovate? What's technology doing? How do we create a strategic plan? How do we budget? But then there are other things like how do we lead within our culture? How do we absorb our, our core values into what we're thinking? How do we keep all these various leaders with, with different unique skill sets aligned on that playing field of the eight pillars? And so this is a way that, that this credit union does that, achieves that alignment of their leadership. Because even though I'm, I'm a CFO or uh, the head of the mortgage division, and we have different job duties, we're still aligned around the same culture and strategy. That's something that's paramount in this leadership development model. They're also given personal coaches. So they'll do this for a year, and each one will have a personal coach. And I've known several leaders, uh, who several CEOs who started out, they said, you know, no, I've got more in me. Who, who's from Amplify Credit Union here? 
Okay, I know your CEO, Paul Trilko. He and I met. I wrote an article on him. And uh, he told me that he had a personal coach. He, when they were about 100 million, he said, you know, I think I've got more in me, but I need some help. He got a coach, and it helped him, and he extended that to his executive team, helped them, and then he started extending it, build a, a leadership development model like this for all of his managers. And so why do we go down here to member-facing employees? Because, like I said, leadership is not necessarily tied to the position. You don't have to have the title of branch manager or VP of anything to be a leader. You can be a role model as a new accounts person, as a call center person, right? You've got people in your credit union, your top quarter percent, top performers that you talked about who don't have the title, but they're leaders, right? People look up to them because they're doing things the right way. So we want to always be, be ex extending development opportunities to people throughout the organization. So what are the benefits of this type of structured leadership development? Well, I think there, there are, are quite a few, but I've really encapsulated them into four words. They give clarity, focus, consistency, and strength. And that's what we're trying to do with leadership. When we talk about velocity, when we talk about leadership being able to set clear direction, this brief model that I've given you here does that. And so, uh, I like, I'll just go through a, a few of these, but you get continuity of culture and values while moving forward and being a, a, a modern credit union. You can adopt modern principles without changing your core values. And so that's what this does. I also like interdepartmental communication and collaboration focused on the same initiatives. Haven't you guys worked in organizations where you were going crossways with each other and I mean I know I was very dependent on the IT area and I had my strategic initiatives the IT department had their strategic initiatives and oftentimes they did not correspond to each other so my primary initiative might be their 101st initiative and that became very very frustrating right so you have to either go through the back door through somebody that you know or, or bloody your knuckles going through the front door or just wait so this gets everybody on the same page. 